This is a tutorial on using the Early Interventionist Pyramid Practices Fidelity Instrument yes, Data Entry Spreadsheet. So when you first enter into the spreadsheet, what you'll see are a couple of tabs down at the bottom. You should have an Instruction tab, Customizations, Data Entry, Individual Summary, Coach Summary, Fidelity, and Item by Item Analysis. If for some reason you don't see those tabs, it could be that your that the bar, the scroll bar down at the bottom is um, needs to be adjusted so sometimes you might just see a few tabs and then this scroll bar will actually be pretty long and so you have two options you can either scroll using this arrow here and it'll scroll through the tabs for you or you can make the scroll bar smaller by going to these three dots here holding down your mouse your left mouse button and then dragging it until all of the tabs are revealed. So the first tab we'll look at is the instruction tabs. The instructions give you just a brief uh, overview of how the uh, data entry works and then it also gives you my name and my email in case you run into any issues feel free to email me and then it also has a link to this tutorial. The customization tab, this is the first tab that you should visit once you're ready to start doing data entry so there are a few things that um, you need to do before you start entering data one of the first ones and probably the most important is deciding on your common administration periods so the way that the spreadsheet works is that it groups data or it aggregates data by a common date and the common date is whatever you decide that it's going to be um, and the reason we do this is because chances are you won't be going out to see the practitioners all on the same date so this is going to happen over the course of a few dates and so in order to look at them um, together then you have to select a common date a common period so what we suggest is that you make a decision on how you want to label those common administration periods. So um, in this example, we use fall and spring followed by the year. So any um, observations in the fall would have that label. Anything in the spring would have that spring 2020 label, etc. You might also choose to use an observation number. So you can do like EI PPFI number one, number two, number three, or you can use a range. So you can say August through October, November through January, or you can also use quarters. So there's different ways that you can aggregate your data by a time period. Um, it's up to you as to what you want to use. And so once you make that decision of what you're going to use, then you go ahead and you just type it in here. So um, so for example, I just typed in spring 2022. So it's up to you what you want to use. And then you have um, 10 spaces. You don't have to use them all, um, but you can. So for fall, let's say we just do fall 2019, then that's all you would type today. You would enter your data. And then in the spring, when you go to enter more data, then you might come in and add the spring 2020. So you don't have to do it all at once. And you can change your mind. Um, you just have to come in here, type it, and then go to your data entry tab and make the adjustments. So once you decide that, you type that in, and then the next thing are the optional fields. So you have um, two optional fields that you can use. You can use the cohort field. So if you have a group of practitioners who are receiving coaching across um, a shared time interval, you might decide to group them by cohort. Um, Aaron, you might decide to use a program type, so if your practitioners come from different programs or if you want to ID them by program, then you can use this uh, field as well. With these two, you will actually be writing in or typing in what the cohort is or what the program type is, so there isn't, um, there isn't a need for you to do that ahead of time, like the common administration periods. And with these two optional fields, you can also decide not to use them. So if you don't want to use them, that's okay too. So once you've decided on your common administration periods and whether or not you're going to use the optional fields, now you're pretty much ready for data entry. So each row in your data entry 
is for um, one observation and so you would type in the program ID if you have one if you want to use it you don't need to use it you would type in the ID for the practitioner these are the two optional fields the cohort and the program type so that's up to you if you want to use them uh, with these like I said you're typing in exactly what it is that you want um, to group them in. so if you decide you want to use um, 2A um, and 2B you, you're just typing that straight into the spreadsheet um, the same thing with program type so if you're if you're doing um, if you're using an ID or something like that in order to identify the program types then you're just typing those in the only thing I would caution you with these two columns with these two fields is that you know exactly what you're typing in and that you are typing it in the same each and every time because the 2B right above is not the same as the 2 a space and a B so Excel will t treat this as two different cohorts it won't treat it as the same thing so you need to make sure that when you're typing it in you're typing in the same thing each time the next field is the date so you're just typing in a date and so you can use that short format and it'll adjust it and then the common administration period so that was what you had customized on this tab so everything you wrote on this that you typed in here is going to show up on in this tab in the drop down so if you don't see your choice make sure to scroll up and then it'll show you all of the same choices so you would just select it and then you're ready for the rest of the data entry if you make a mistake you just go back to that cell and then on your keyboard you um, click on delete okay. so once you've you have your common administration date so that's kind of what I was talking about if you decide well I don't really want to use fall and spring then that's fine but you should come back to your customizations fix it to whatever it is that you're gonna decide to use and then in your data entry make sure that now that fall 2019 that you change it to whatever you've decided that you want to use so that's the only thing that you want to make sure to do is that if you do change it to come back and change it in the data entry um, fields as well as far as the data entry for each one of the items so you're entering yes or you're entering no and so it's uh, important that you you do enter yes or no the other thing that you can do if you don't want to use a drop down to make data entry faster is that you can use um, the Y or the N so you can type that into those fields it won't let you type anything else it'll give you an error um, so you want to make sure that you're only using the Y or the N you can use uh, lowercase that is okay um, it'll still count it for you um, so you have that option of using the drop down or typing it in and so then you'll want to do that all the way across once you've entered data then you're ready to see your individual summaries so the individual summary uh, the first thing that you want to do is you want to refresh so after you've entered your data you'll want to come to this first table click anywhere the pivot table analyze tab you'll want to go to refresh and refresh all and this will refresh all of the tables and all of the charts in your um, spreadsheet so that's the first thing you want to do once you finish entering data so you'll see that the data will show you by common administration period so here you would select one teacher ID to look at their data for each of the for each of the administration periods and then it'll show you um, the percentage of items scored yes by practice and so you have that um, to clear your filter you would just click on this the multi select tool what it does is that it allows you to click on a few things at once um, you can click on it and then you can highlight two or three different IDs and it aggregates whichever one of these has data for fall or for spring or both it'll aggregate all of their data by this time period or any other time period that um, that there is data 
The next is the coach summary tab. So this tab, it aggregates across all of the practitioners. So the individual summary it was meant to look at each individual practitioner, but the coach summary aggregates all of the practitioners and uh, looks at them by the administration period. So across all of my um, practitioners, the percentage of items scored yes by building partnerships with families is 40%. And in the spring, it was 45%. So you have that in a table form, and you also have it in this bar chart. You can filter here by cohort if you used it. So if you entered your data and you used the cohort field, your options should be listed out here as far as what you've entered. And then you can look at it that way. You can select you know, which cohort you want to look at. Um, you can look at the program type. So if you've used that as well, you can look at it that way too. Or if you just want to look at one administration period, you can. So you can just click on that. And so you'll see that it allows you to use all three filters at once. So if there's a filter, you're like, well, I do want to see cohort two, but across the different program types, but only for spring, you can clear the program type filter and uh, it'll show you both and then the common administration period. So you can decide, you know, which filters you want to use. If anything is selected, then it'll show up like this with the little red X. If it's grayed out, it means that everything is selected or it's showing you for that option what's available. So for example, here, because I chose cohort two, the only program type for cohort two is program C, program type C. E is not an option. And then it's showing me that for cohort two, program type C, there is data for fall and spring. If I click on one, again, there's data for fall and spring, and the program type is E. So you'll see that difference in the program type that changed. So you can filter by, um, again, any of, any of these that you want to see. This blank is always there, so I would suggest in order to remove it, you can click on this multi-select here, this little check marks, and you can um, just click where it says blank to unselect it and then it unselects it on the other ones so that way you only have actual data. Then we have a fidelity tab. The fidelity tab, what it's showing you is what's the percentage across all of the items um, and so you can look at it by ID, you can look at it by cohort, you can look at it by program type so it'll just filter out as you select any of these. And so what it will show you is the administration type and then the teacher ID. And again, this also has the blank that you might um, decide to get rid of just to have a cleaner table. Then you have the item by item analysis. And what this tab really does is it shows you which of the items were scored a no. And so the first table that you have here are all, is the items and then you have the common administration periods and then the grand total across all of the administration periods. And so you can say, okay, well, for BP1, it was scored no three times in fall 2019. This is across all of your practitioners, but no times in spring 2020. So you can see that there. You can see like, okay, well, this is a, a five. So you know that BP2 um, in fall 2019, it was scored a no. There were three times it was scored a no and two times in the spring that it was scored a no. So that's what that's telling you. So you can kind of, you can scroll down and you can see, you know, which of the items might be um, practices that you are not, um, that you're not seeing that, that aren't being used. So that's what this table might tell you. You can also, if you want to look by just one of the practitioners, you can. Um, you can use by cohort, by program type, or by common administration period. So you have all of these filters that you can use to look at this data. 
and then you can also look at it here so by each of these um, indicators what you have here is like building partnerships with families so for practitioner 2307 in the fall 2019 the number one means it was scored a no okay so BP and BP 1 2 5 6 7 8 and 10 were scored a no and so that's what that means 3 and 4 and 9 were scored a yes and that's why there's a zero the bolded line above is a sum so for like this practitioner here 2702 there's data for two common administration periods and so then you can see here what's the sum across both of those of how many times that item was scored a no and then it also shows you by each of the administration periods if it was scored a no and so you'll have that for social emotional development for family centered coaching dyadic relationships children with challenging behaviors and um, social emotional assessment so you'll have all of those tables with all of their items um, so you can see exactly which are the items that you know you might need to um, provide more coaching and feedback to support that increased use. Um, like I said, you can filter by an ID, so if you just want to look at one of the practitioners, you can. And so once you select that ID, it filters this table to only show you for that ID, and then it filters the rest of the tables to just show you that one practitioner. And that's pretty much the different types of analyses that you can do with this spreadsheet. Um, the really important thing here is to not delete any rows, to um, make sure that you're filling in the yeses and the noes, either typing it or choosing it from the drop down, and that you're also doing your common administration periods. If you do not do a common administration period here, and you don't indicate one here, the spreadsheet is not going to work so you want to make sure that you do that first before you enter any data if you run into any issues again on the instruction tab is my email feel free to email me with any questions or any concerns